for the uh, new students. Uh, my name is Vitaly Neymer and I'm the Grand Master in Residence at the St. Louis Chess Club for the next uh, three weeks. Um, I already said before that I'm from Russia and hence my, my accent. In Russia we really like to play chess as in the United States. You had a question about me? All right, what's your question? My rating is almost 2400. Right now it's about 2350. Uh, but 2400 is how much you need to be in order to become an international master. Um, so usually chess players, they start around 600. Every time you win a game, you, get, you gain around five to 10 points. Depends who you're playing against, okay? So it took me a long time to become an international master, about uh, 10 to 15 years. So it's a, it's a journey. It's not, not so easy, but it's definitely uh, attainable, okay? Okay, so we are today, uh, this is our second class for today, uh, for the more advanced uh, students, right? So in the first lesson, we learned about uh, the opening principles, right? We learned about the center, we learned about uh, developing the pieces, we learned about um, and castling, okay? Defending your king. So today, I would like to show you uh, some opening traps. Okay. How to set up a trap for your opponent in the opening. Because if you beat them in the opening, you don't have to suffer for so long. Okay, you can beat them very, very fast. Sounds good? Alrighty, so here's our first, our first uh, trap for today. Now, first of all, uh, probably most of you are playing against uh, your parents. And you're prob probably playing against your siblings and in school as well, right? And I don't know what about you, but I always experienced that, um, I used to say in school that I, I play chess, and somebody would come up to me and say, oh, I also know how to play chess. And then once you start playing against, against, uh, against him, he, you, you realize that they have no idea how to move, right? But what happens is, is that they try to uh, make the same moves as you do. So they copycat. So today our first lesson is going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to punish those copycats. Let's say that you are playing white, and we, we already set, said that our first move is going to be pawn to e4, and let's say black is making the same move. Now black doesn't have any idea how to play, but he's just going to copycat from you. Okay? Now the second move that we said that white should do is to put the knight on f3, right? We said that we would like to develop our pieces and that uh, the knight is going to attack the pawn, okay? So, the best move for black is actually defending the pawn right now. But, again, as we said, your opponent is just going to copy from you, okay? So how do we punish him? What do we do now? What kind of move should, should white do here? Who knows? Yes. Take the pawn. Take the pawn. Free pawn, right? Well, almost free. And I like free stuff. We're just gonna take him. Yummy, yummy. Okay, so obviously he's going to take us as well. Now, it's a little bit more complicated in this position. Looks like everything is even, but now white has a very, very strong move that uh, I would like you to know. So, let's see who has any idea. Yes? Four? Okay. So you are saying queen to g4. Okay. Anybody has any other idea? We're going to look at the, your idea. Yes? E, queen to e2, excellent. All right, anybody has any other idea? Yes? Queen to f3, also an excellent move. Okay. It looks like uh, the queen is the winner, but we really have to decide where do we put the queen. You have another idea? e2? All right, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so now, first question is where to put the queen. Now, 
all of those moves on are good now if we play queen to g4 the queen from here is attacking the knight what is the best defense here for uh, for black who knows what's the best defense here let's see there's one move is very very good as a hint i'm going to tell you that black can defend his knight but he can also attack the queen and there are actually two moves like that yes excellent very good pawn to d5 is the first one defending the knight and attacking the queen all right and the other move black can also probably play just knight to f6 just escape with the knight defending the knight and attacking the queen from here okay so queen to g4 is not as good queen to f3 is very tricky because if we defend the knight now Let's say the pawn goes to d5. What can white do here? Yes? Queen takes f7. Queen takes f7. Checkmate. Exactly. Very, very good. As you can see, the knight is defending the queen. And it was a very, very fast win. But in here, black can actually um, defend from the threat pretty easy. How is that? yeah 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 we can play either knight of six oops again or knight g5 attacking the queen and defending or even knight to d6 okay so queen f3 looks good but not as powerful as queen to e2 Queen to e2 is the best move. So let's let's think about it. now. First of all, we said that the, the, the that black is going to copycat, right? But if black plays queen to e7, you take the knight. And if he takes our knight, <laughs> yeah, you guys just gonna laugh in his face, right? And then you're gonna take his queen. And that's it, right? It's not a checkmate, but uh, the king has to move or he has to uh, cover with the bishop. And it's a very easy win, right? With the queen up. <laughs> so hopefully, he, your opponent does know some chess. So hopefully here, he realizes that queen e7 would actually lose the queen. Now in this case, black would probably move the knight somewhere. Now the knight has many spots. He can go to c5, d6, f6, g5. So these are the main uh, main options. But let's just look at one of them. Let's say it's just the knight goes back to f6, where he came from. Now it looks like black has successfully defended his position, right? But white has a very, very strong move again, and which allows him to win the black's qu queen. Oh, oh. Yeah, sh let's see. So what is the move that white can do? Yes, please. Okay, interesting. You're saying knight takes f7. Now, first of all, good idea because it's a check and also the knight is attacking the queen and the rook the knight is forking the queen and the rook but yeah unfortunately it doesn't work that well because the king can both go out of the check and take the knight so that doesn't work but very close very close good idea you're in the right direction but it needs just some kind of improvement uh, some of you I didn't hear before. Yes. Knight to c6. Knight to c6. Very good. Now, in the chess game, we call it a discovered check. Okay? So, actually, not the piece who just moved made the check, but it's the piece behind him. 
Okay, it's what it was hiding. The queen was hiding behind the king, uh, the, the knight. And everywhere the knight goes, it is actually going to be a check. So the only question is, where is the best place for the knight? Okay, and you guys were correct. Knight to c6 is the most powerful move. Now, it looks like the knight is attacked three times by the pawns and by the knight. But nobody can take it. Right? Because it's a check. So black has to defend from the check first and only then defend his queen. Now black has two options. He can either defend with the bishop, but in this case we are just going to capture the queen. Right? Or he can defend with the queen. And in this case, we also take the queen. <laughs> Okay, so this is a very, very good trick to know, especially um, when you're playing against your classmates or maybe against your parents, which try to copycat from you, okay? So I would like to suggest that you guys make a bet with your parents, okay? If you beat them, you, you get, you get a, a candy. A candy is enough, no? So before we make this trap, make a bet, all right? But you, you didn't hear it from me, okay? Okay, guys, so this is the copycat variation. Now, you can make it one time against somebody, but then hopefully your parents will learn, okay, how to defend against it. Now, uh, I would like to show you the next trick on how to beat them, uh, your opponents, very, very fast. Now, this mate is very, very famous because it is, um, it's very fast, okay? This is... A, this mate we call a scholar's mate. And some of you know it. Now the reason what, why I would like to show it to you is A, because, so you know how to checkmate your opponents very quickly, and B, you also need to know how to defend from the scholar's mate, okay? So the second move after white is playing e4, e5, the, the bishop is actually going to c4 okay now technically actually this opening has its own name it's called the bishop's opening okay like we had the four knights opening this is called the bishop's opening now let's say black knows how to play the four knights opening and he just continues with the same move order so knight to c6 yeah so remember, when you usually play knight to f3, usually black is playing knight to c6. So black said, okay, you just develop your, your bishop, there is no difference. I, would, uh, I should just put my knight on c6. Now, white actually develops his queen. Yeah. Now the queen can go either to f3 or to h5. Yeah. The h5 move is a little bit more sneaky. Why is that? Because here, suddenly, black realizes, wait a second, I can move my knight to f6, attacking the white queen, right? But that's actually a very big mistake, right? Ash, so raise your hand. Why is the mistake? How can white punish black? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes. Where? On f7. Who is going to capture it? The bishop or the, or the queen? Who is going to capture it? Yes. The queen. Yes. And the queen just takes on f7. Okay. Very, very fast. This is a checkmate in only four moves. That's it. You checkmate your opponent and you go home all happy. Um, so... Now, usually it's not so good to develop the queen in the opening. Yeah. So I would like to show you, if you are playing as black, how to punish your opponent, how to defend from, the, from this checkmate, but also how to punish your opponent, okay? Now, first of all, the easiest way 
if white starts uh, with the bishop, bishop c4, the easiest way to defend from it is what? Yeah? Knight to f6. That is correct. Now the idea is that now the knight is controlling the h5 square. Also, the knight is controlling the f file, so he is blocking this mate. So there is no mate threat. That's pretty easy, right? So after your opponent moves the bishop out, you just have to move the other knight, the knight who is attacking the pawn. Okay? But there is a more tricky variation of the scholar's mate. And this is when white moves the queen first. Yeah. Now in this case, the queen is attacking the pawn. So what should we do now? Here we have two options. We have two choices. There's a risky one and there's a safer one. So let's see, what are your ideas? Yeah, what's your idea? Right. Yeah. Uh, just place C6. Yeah. Okay, anybody has any other idea? Yes? Uh, queen E7. Queen E7. Yeah. Okay, Queen E7, yes. Any other ideas? Yeah? Knight to e7, okay, yeah. For d6. d6, okay. Any other ideas? Now, first of all, okay, so good, good ideas. First of all, what white expects black to do is to make this move, g6, which is a terrible move. And just because uh, you, you took some lessons with me, you know that this move is, is a bit bad, right? Because now, white is going to crush black. He's going to take on e5, and then take his rook, and then sweep all this, uh, the eighth rank. So g6 is a very bad move. So, well, how to defend? First of all, we can play knight c6. This is the safe route, because the knight is defending the pawn. Although here, White can still play this move, bishop c4. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yes, and now, only after this move, now you can play pawn to g6. Defending and attacking the queen. Now the queen, she's a bit pesky, so she can still go back and she can still threaten this mate on f7. But here we can defend, find another defense, yes. Knight f6, Knight f6. Yeah. very good. This is one of the best options actually, how to defend against the scholar's mate. Because uh, as we said, uh, time in chess is very, very valuable. And if you can see what White did, White is spending so much time with his queen. He moved the queen to uh, h5, then he moved the queen to f3, and black is just continuing to develop his pieces. Yeah? So really, black is up in, in development. OK, so this is the safe route. Now, what is the risky one? I'm going to show you the risky one. After queen to h5, you can actually attack the queen with knight to f6. OK? But in this case, you are actually sacrificing the pawn on e5. Check. But here you can just block with your bishop. Now, what did, wh what did we gain? Now, it looks like we just uh, gave up a pawn. But we gained uh, some time. So for example, if white tries to play pawn to d4 and says, Hey, I have the center, I have the queen in the middle, uh, I have a pawn up. Mm -mm, because black got the time. And here black can actually play knight c6. And although your queen is in the center, I have more pieces who 
which are developed. And the center becomes very, very shaky, very, very weak. So white has to move the queen, and he's definitely going to lose one of those pawns. Okay? So when you push your pawns, be careful, because you want your pieces to support those pawns. You can't just push all your pawns all along. Okay? Yes? Yes, a pawn or a queen. Also, black is going to castle next move and bring his rook to e e8 and start attacking the king very, very fast. Okay? So you sacrifice a pawn for a positional advantage. Sounds good? Alrighty, so these are the two tricks uh, that I wanted to teach you, but there is another one. So again, we learn, uh, as far as now, we learn the copycat variation, how to uh, punish a copycat uh, opponents. Then we learn the scholar's mate. Let's look at another, um, another trap. Let's say you're playing white. You played e4, pawn to e5, knight of 3, knight to c6, Now, usually, as we said, white can play knight c3, but in this case, white, can pl you can also play bishop to c4. Yeah. Uh, uh, why is your hand? So what is the name of this opening? Yes. Yeah, there is the fried liver. What else? There is another one, yeah? There's no name yet. No name yet. Uh, there is actually a name, yeah? The Italian, yeah. But the bishop on c4, it's called the Italian. Okay? Now here, black can play a few options. And I'm going to, to show you two of them. The first one is that the black just develops his knight to f6. So who knows how should white continue now? Yeah, yeah. You can play knight c3, okay. Actually, knight c3, I'm going to uh, show you later um, how can black punish white for this, for this move, knight c3. But there's a stronger move here for white, yeah? Knight g5. Knight g5, excellent. Now, remember that in the openings where white starts e4, e5, usually the f7 square becomes the target for the attack, becomes very, very weak. As you can see, white is attacking the pawn with the bishop and with the knight. So how should, how should black defend? Yeah? Yeah, that's the only move, right? Defending with the queen will not help because I can just take it. So pawn to d5 is the only move. Pawn takes. And now, what happens if the knight takes on d5? That's a big, big blunder. You're correct. So how does white punish? It looks like black is even better, right? Because he has two knights in the center. The queen is attacking the knight. But white has this very strong sacrifice in this position. Yeah. No, behind you, yes. Very good. Knight takes f7. We sacrifice the knight. King takes. And queen to f3. And then if the king moves, we just take the knight. We can either take with the bishop or with the queen. Maybe with the bishop is better because, again, we are threatening this mate on f7. If the queen takes, then queen takes, right? Now, if the king goes to e6, this is the only thing that we need to know here. If the king tries to protect this knight, are we actually going to take it? No, because if we exchange all the pieces, 
we are going to enter into an end game. It's kind of an end game, no queens on the board. Uh, so although the king looks very vulnerable in the center, it is going to be pretty safe because even if after one check, the king can just go backwards and really uh, we don't have enough pieces to attack. So remember this, when you are attacking your opponent, you want to keep your queens on the board. Don't exchange your queens. So how should we have played here? Yes. Very good, knight c3. We usually would like to add, add additional force on the, on the pinned, uh, pinned uh, piece. Okay? And this variation is called the fried liver variation. Okay? And it, it, it got its name because uh, there was a grandmaster. He said that, he said that the black uh, is uh, dead as a, as a piece of liver. Okay, so basically uh, black is losing, okay, with a king on e6. Okay, last, last trap I, want, I wanted to show you is that instead of knight to f6, let's say black is playing uh, this move, pawn to d6. Now, the idea of pawn to d6, this is not such a good move because it's blocking the bishop, but it has stopped the fried liver. Because if the knight goes to g5, now the queen can just take, the, take it, right? So it stopped the fried liver. So what I did, knight c3, and now black played bishop to g4. Everything looks fine, right? Up until this moment. So how to play here? Here, it is very good to play. Who wants to, yeah? H3, very good, attacking the bishop. We also call this move a window, creating a window for the king. That's after the castle, so the king can escape. The bishop escaped to h5. So far, everything you looked uh, looks usual, usual right? Everybody developed their pieces. Uh, Black is making this nice pin. But there's a very strong move here for white. Let's see if somebody can find it. So it's white to move. All right, yes, I think you were the first one, yeah. Knight to d5? Yeah. Okay, well, what's your idea? Let's see if I just make knight f6. Almost, almost. Close. You're, in, was, you're in, on the right direction. Anybody else has any other ideas? That's a very good sacrifice here. Think about those captures. Yeah? Very good, Adi. Knight takes e5. Wow. We are giving away the knight. We are giving away the queen. We are giving it up everything. Doesn't make any sense, right? But let's look what happened. In the game, black took, obviously, the queen. Right? But what happens here? Why did white sacrifice the queen? Because now, white has a mate in two moves, a checkmate. Yeah? Very good. So it's very simple because we just have to look for the checks. The only check that we have is bishop takes f7, check. The king must go to e7. And knight going to d5. Look at this, the king is in the, in the center of the board, but all the squares are taken away from him. The knight takes this square, and it's a check. And the king cannot take the, the, the bishop because it is defended. This is called mate legal. Okay? 
Now, what would happen if black would see the mate uh, and he says, uh -uh, I'm not taking your queen, I don't want to lose immediately. What if black would take the knight? Now, if he takes the knight with the pawn, then you just take the bishop and we, uh, we gained a, a whole pawn, right? Because we took the pawn on e5. But the real question is, what if he takes our knight with his knight? Yeah. Yes, we have to take the bishop. But now he takes our bishop. Uh-oh. What happened? We just lost a piece. I thought that the, that the puzzle was working. It was supposed to be a trap. We just lost a piece. How do we get the piece back? It is white to move. Yes. Exactly, excellent. Always look for the action moves. Checks, captures, and threats. Queen all the way is going to b5. And probably he has to defend, and now we take the knight. Okay, so this is another trap which is coming from the Italian setup. So you have two um, traps which you can make. You can make other. The, you can either make a fried liver out of your opponent with knight to g5, or you can also play, if he plays d6, you can make this uh, knight takes on e5. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so we looked at four traps today. Okay, the copycat variation, then we look at the scholar's mate, we look at mate legal, and the fried liver.